Dali and the Path of Dreams by Anna Obiels, illustrated by Subi. Anna Obiels graduated from the University of Barcelona with a degree in art history. As well as being a writer, she now works in the children's section at a public library where she is responsible for organizing activities to encourage children to read. Subi is the pen name for Joan Subirana. He studied applied arts at university and specialized in mural painting and graphic design. He now works as an illustrator for children's books and magazines and has a daily comic strip in a newspaper in Catalonia. He's won many prizes in Spain for his illustrations, cartoons, and paintings. He began drawing as a young child, illustrating the stories he made up in his head. He believes that childhood is a precious time when everything is surprising and anything is possible. And he tries to keep that spirit alive in his paintings. Once upon a time, there was a little boy whose name was Salvador, though everyone called him Salvi. What Salvi liked most of all was to run barefoot along the beach with his hoop. One afternoon, as he was playing in the waves, Salvi noticed something gleaming under the water. Looking closer, he saw it was a key that the sea had left there. Salvi popped it into his pocket. Wondering what the key might be for, Salvi hopped up onto one of the long-legged elephants and let his imagination lead the way. He soon came across a very strange cook who was tossing clocks as though they were pizzas. Each clock showed only one time and never changed. Suddenly, one of the clocks struck three, which was exactly the hour of magic. Hello, cook, said Salvi. Do you know what this key is for? Let's have a look, said the cook. Salvi passed him the key. Aha, this is a magic key. Leave your elephant here and get into this little boat. It knows where to take you. Salvi was curious. He got into the boat and immediately it began to float up into the air. When he was nearer to the sky than the ground, Salvi noticed that some of the clouds made funny shapes like objects and animals, and he started to play at guessing what they looked like. The boat floated up to a very tall tower that had seven enormous eggs on the roof. Salvi jumped out and ran up the steps that wound around the tower. He came to a very strange doorway. Inside the tower, it was dark and mysterious. Everywhere Salvi looked, there were drawers and doors. He wondered if he could open any of them, but the key in his pocket didn't seem to fit any of the locks. Salvi decided to try one last drawer. This time, to his amazement, the key fit. Would he find a treasure chest, a secret map? But inside, there was just one black piano key. Salvi popped it into his pocket, just as he had done from the key from the sea. Salvi went on exploring the strange tower until he came across a room with a piano standing right in the middle of the floor. Salvi took a closer look and saw that one of the piano keys was missing. Could it be the one in his pocket? He took it out and put it in place. All of a sudden, the piano started to wiggle and wobble as though it were made of rubber. Its feet left the floor and it flew around the room. It began to play a tune all by itself. The music was very sweet, but also a little scary. Then, in time to the music, a pawn, a swan, a snail tamer, a flying banana, and all sorts of strange people and objects appeared from the corners of the room. The skipping lady, the fried egg penguins, the unicorn, the breadhead cyclist, the ants, the stone man, and the lady with the butterfly wings all set off along a very long path. The path was so long, it didn't seem to have any end at all but at last it came to a point like the end of a long black mustache. The point led to a very special drawer. Each and every one of these most peculiar people settled down to live in that drawer for a very long time. Like every child in the world, Salvi grew up and then he wasn't known as Salvi anymore, but Salvador Dali. Although he was grown up, he never forgot those dreamy afternoons of his childhood and he decided to open this very special drawer and paint the story of each of the people who lived inside. So today, when we look at the paintings of Salvador Dali, we can all share a part of those wonderful dreams. Salvador Dali. 
Once upon a time, a boy called Salvador Dali was born in Figueres near Girona in Spain in the spring of 1904. Dali was creative at an early age. He did his first painting at home on the wall of the laundry room. It is said that his first job as an artist was to create a little model carriage for the three kings in a nativity scene to celebrate their arrival on the 6th of January, which is the most magical night of the year in Spain. Dali dreamed of being a chef, or maybe a great general like Napoleon, but when the time came, he chose to study painting and traveled to Paris and later to New York. In Paris, Dali met a group of artists who called themselves the Surrealists. They were inspired by dreams and the world of the unconscious. The story goes that in Paris, Dali met Gaia, his fairy tale princess. She became his muse, his model, and his wife. They lived together in a fisherman's shack next to the sea at Port Legat in Spain. They decorated their house with all sorts of strange objects, and people said that if you made it past the polar bear who guided, guarded the front door, the inside was more like a maze in a dream than a real house. As well as being a painter, Dali was a writer, a stage designer, a jeweler, a book illustrator, and a film director. But however he worked, he always tried to capture a new world that had never been seen before. These are some photos from the Dali Museum in St. Petersburg, Florida. If you are in the area and have a chance to go, I highly recommend it.